Derbyshire, England, an otherwise tranquil village becomes a battlefield involving 200 police officers, preventing anti-fascist protesters from entering a political rally. The BMP, which gained two MP seats in the June European elections, holds its summer rally here each year for its members. It's a rare chance for them to meet their leader, a man with links to far right-wing movements around the world and possibly the most controversial politician in Britain today, loved by some, loathed by many. Nick Griffin claims to represent the views of millions of Britons, white, young and undereducated, whom he claims have been abandoned by Britain's Labour Party. They have favoured generations of immigrants in their place, he claims. Indeed, Griffin believes that Europe is on the verge of losing its identity due to reports of rising levels of birth rates of Muslim immigrants. The Muslim birth rate in Britain, for instance, is um, more than three times the indigenous birth rate. And the death rate, because we're an old population, uh, the death rate is so enormous uh, that within about 20 years we'll hit a, hit a demographic tipping point after which it will be impossible to stop this country becoming Islamified. This particular fear which BMP members hold, what they call Islamification, angers the protesters, some of whom travelled as far as London and are part of a well-organised group. It's a peaceful demonstration. We don't want to physically harm them. We want to tell them verbally that they shouldn't be allowed to, to come on streets and to chant their racist, like, notions and whatever they have, because we, we got a lot of that. At the start, we got loads of people doing Hitler salutes and that's it. It's in the north of England where the BMP gathered most of their votes. In the northwest, specifically in towns like Oldham near Manchester, which have large Pakistani communities, there is a visible dividing line between the two cultures. Hard to believe in this sleepy town, but Oldham made the international news when it descended into race riots in 2001. Here in Oldham, we've had a mixed society for, for more than 50 years. We've got many, many, many people from, of Muslim faith, from Asian background, third and fourth generations, university degrees, very much part of our society, play, holding increasingly important positions. And yet we do have a lack of assimilation. We do have a degree of separate developments between the indigenous white communities and the, and the Asian community. Now, Griffin would like to promote that. He'd like separate development. He doesn't want um, the races to mix. And yet, uh, you'll find people within the Muslim community who are resistant to that, just as Griffin is resistant to it from the white and racist perspective. But where does such a perspective take the BNP leader? What can we expect now from a British far-right-wing party? To find out, we headed south to the capital in the heart of British politics. We've had big protest votes in the past. In 1989, the Green Party got a massive vote as the Labour Party looked as if it was falling apart. The, the top of the BNP are clever people who know how to use the system and to manipulate the system. Nick Griffin will have already worked that out. He'll have seen how, for instance, the Liberal Democrats in this country used money they got once we had proportional representation in Europe to reach electoral areas that would have been a desert for them before. The British electorate doesn't really take Europe very seriously, so thinks it can kick out in European elections at no cost to itself. But now such a casual protest vote looks as though it comes with a price. This is a rally in Bucharest, Romania, from the New Right Party, which currently doesn't hold any seats in the European Parliament. The BNP are looking for such partners across Europe, though, to fly the flag of a trans-European party. Such a group would only require a further six seats, and Eastern European countries which have formed nationalist movements are prime contenders. These pictures here are from Hungary and show a paramilitary group parading through a town where local people show their rage towards them particularly after there have been a spate of recent killings of Roma people there. The Hungarian right wing, which has strong links with Griffin's BMP party, would play a major role if such a group in the parliament were to be formed. But it's in Brussels where MEPs from the mainstream parties are more concerned with the BMP members, plus their sympathisers in the current term. Most of these worries are coming from the Socialist Party, 
whose members are troubled by the BNP and what they're able to do behind the scenes. If we talk about the independent uh, members, uh, they don't have much opportunities. But the real problem is that uh, they, uh, such people, such parties, they infiltrate other political groups uh, on the right, and this way they, give, they have the strength to influence decisions. The democratic rules uh, uh, give a chance for such representatives, for such parties, to have a real influence in this parliament. <laughs> But centre-right MEPs in the Parliament don't need to venture too far to see examples of right-wing parties calling for stronger rights for indigenous Europeans. On their doorstep, in Belgium, is the Vlaams Belang. I think there's a future for parties in the European Parliament who are in favour of uh, and who want to fight for the preserving of national sovereignty, of um, national identity. It's not because we don't have uh, a political group right now that we cannot work together with other parties. And, and uh, you know, I'm thinking of um, uh, contacts we have, informal contacts sometimes with uh, other parties that are uh, members of established political groups. Although there is one centre-right party which will always walk away from Griffin, the UK Independence Party couldn't be clearer about the BNP and thinks the socialists are overreacting. We will be doing no deals with the BNP. We won't even drink in the same pubs as them. We want an independent, self-governing Britain that governs and controls her own borders. All the BNP do is drag that argument down. You know, people in politics love to have a bogeyman and say for the socialist group, the BNP's Nick Griffin is that figure. But all these people making comments about whatever influence he may or may not have don't know the beast they're talking about. He doesn't know the first thing about the European Parliament or about European legislation. So, no love lost between UKIP and BNP. It's clear, though, that Griffin's aim is to clean up his party. At this rally, for example, journalists were not even allowed to interview BNP members and were escorted by security guards everywhere. The new image will take time to develop. In the meantime, Griffin is trying to convince the sceptical press corps and centre-right colleagues in the Parliament that his own extremist background was nothing more than adolescent folly. And if everything I supposed to have said and done was true, I'd be a monster. Men do tend to mellow as they get older, so I'm a very mellow person.